care, everyone. This week, Theresa May finally grasped the idea that her deal has about as much chance of being formally enshrined in law as the five-second rule, or that one about stepping on cracks in the pavement. A few days later, she flew out to Europe once more, expecting the EU Commission to ditch ideological purity in favour of pragmatism or economics. There's about as much chance of that happening, of course, as there is of seeing Jade Goody being the new face of the £50 note. After two years, Mrs May seemingly still doesn't get it that the EU will never settle for anything other than a deal that involves more Europe. To them, the deal as it stands gives them Northern Ireland. That's a cause for which the IRA unsuccessfully fought for decades, yet Brussels managed to do it in under two years thanks to Mrs May's incompetence. Unless I'm wrong, of course, and the Prime Minister has simply adopted a mantra of aiming low so you'll never be disappointed. This week, of course, also saw Mrs May finally face a vote of confidence by her party in which she won, albeit she received less than two-thirds of the votes. The vote may have been a great song and dance number for the news media to discuss for 24 hours, but in the long run it's ultimately as meaningful as deciding whether to wrap your chips up in the telegraph or the Daily Mirror. At this stage, it really doesn't matter who's in charge of the Conservative Party, which I guess is good because nobody is, but as of this week, it's now seven days less than it was last weekend, and Brexit is steadily coming down the line in March. Also in March, St. Patrick's Day, so you can kiss goodbye to any chance that Jean-Claude Juncker will be in a sober state to make any last-minute changes to any deal that's arranged. The irony really is it was the Remain camp that insisted that everything had to go before Parliament, so now even if Mrs May formally actually came out and decided she wanted to cancel Brexit, she'd have to go to Parliament and get them to vote on it thanks to the Lib Dems. You know, it's likely the one single policy to have come out of the words of Nick Clegg and Tony Blair that I actually wholeheartedly endorse. On that bombshell, I guess I'll leave it for this week. See you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.